Israel Live. Now, very first story. President John Dramani Mahama on Friday swore in two envoys with a call on them to leverage bilateral relations that would attract investors into the country. He said the days of ambassadors popping champagne and having social pleasures are giving way to the spearheading negotiations and agreements that could be mutually beneficial. The envoys, including Dr. Tony Edu, who has been posted to the Netherlands, and Victor Smith, who is heading to the United Kingdom, took the oaths of office, allegiance, and secrecy. They are the first batch of 10 high commissioners and ambassadors President Mahama appointed earlier this year to be posted to various countries. And, uh, I'm sure that you know what the changing dynamics of our politics and society are. Um, ambassadorial positions are now postings where people go to work hard to attract investment and economic opportunity uh, for their countries. The, um, Formal diplomacy and uh, cocktail and champagne drinking are no longer the main thrust of diplomatic work, but you know, hard grinding, you know, um, work to try and create opportunities for the home country are the main thrust of what we would expect you to do. But knowing both of you and knowing the kind of experience that you have and understanding both the politics and society of Ghana, and I'm sure with the orientation that you have received from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you are poised to do justice to the jobs that we've given. On behalf of my colleague and friend, Victor Smith, and myself, allow me to express our sincere thanks for the honor of this appointment. As, as I've said to others, the principle that no matter the onerous nature of the responsibility, once you accept it, you must perform it to the best of your ability. I can assure you, Mr. President, that we will perform to promote the positive image of our country and the socio-economic development of his people. Meanwhile, outgoing Russian Ambassador Vladimir Bering was at the Flagstaff House to bid farewell to President Mahama after ending his duty tour of Ghana. The monitoring team in 2013 has unearthed numerous negative and unethical practices engaged in by some road engineers and contractors. This was disclosed by the Minister of Roads and Highways, Al Haji Amidu Suleimana, at the Department of Urban Roads 2014 Annual Strategic Conference. Now, two schools of thought emerged from the debate over the essence of the Judgment Debt Commission organized by Joy Evam on Thursday. Whilst lawyer Ewe Fadel was of the opinion commissions of inquiry have become tools used by governments to harass political opponents, his co-debater Ernest Tabuchi believes such bodies are a cost-effective way to get public institutions to carry out their functions and do so properly. The Judgment Debt Commission was set up last year at a time a series of scandalous judgment debt stories had gripped the nation, the most infamous being the 51 million Ghana CDs paid to Alfred Agbeshi Woyome, a businessman with ties to the governing National Democratic Congress. The Commission's mandate was to inquire into the inordinate payments within a specified period. Seven months short of two years, many still question the Commission's usefulness. Egbert Fabel argued the commission is not just a waste of public resources, but a needless waste of public resources. Why is it that we've set up a judgment debt commission? It says that, no, 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 I'm not looking at the judgment, I'm looking at the circumstances around it. So that after that fought, after that fought, to come and advise the president of the republic to institute measures that will correct, that will correct, if you like, such situations, we have enough laws in this country. I think that this charity ought to stop, and we are just wasting money when there are children who are schooling under trees. 
Ernest Abuchi would, however, not agree. A lot of things are happening in this country that we may all have issues about, about we may have many criticisms to say about many things, uh, about, about government policies, among others. Nonetheless, if the commission of inquiry is designed to unearth a particular evil, I wonder how anybody can say that the commission constitutes a waste of public resources when the constitution has given one key indicia for the establishment of a commission of inquiry. Is it a matter of public interest? Egbert Fabel cited the institutions he says could have performed the roles assigned the Judgment Debt Commission. What is the Commission doing that the police cannot do, that IOKO cannot do, that the BNI in its ways of even fighting more serious information better than what the Commission is doing cannot do? I just want to submit that, Mr. Chairman, all over the historical roadmap of this country, most, and I say most, commissions of inquiry have been set up to hound political opponents. His co debater, however, believed not setting up the commission would have exposed a preference for a business as usual type of governance. It is important for us to distinguish the inherent quality of something from its application. A commission of inquiry is a variable, it can therefore be manipulated. It can be properly applied. Its outcome can be properly applied or its outcome can be abused. But that is a separate inquiry from asking whether or not a commission of inquiry whose work is still ongoing is a failure because others have failed in the past. In the ensuing vote, 43 people voted for the motion, 31 voted against the motion, while four found reason to abstain. Workers of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital who draw their salaries from the hospital's own pool of resources are threatening a strike. They have given management a four-week ultimatum to address the issue of salary discrepancies and better their conditions of service. The over 300 workers comprise orderlies, security personnel, account officers, IT personnel and hospitality managers who say they have not enjoyed a salary increment in six years. We are going to the same market and we cannot bear it anymore. We don't have free facility, we, we don't have anything, they are cheating us. So we are begging them, they, to, they should come to our aid. We are not enjoying anything here. When you are sick, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. They also complain there has not been any attempt by management to review their salaries, as has happened to their other colleagues who are on government payroll. By January, they start employing people. Such people are going to be paid by single spine, leaving the old people who have worked for 15 years, 12 years within the service. So, in fact, I don't understand that issue. The workers were psyching themselves up for a demonstration on Friday after failed attempts to get management to address their concerns. Chief Executive Reverend Alfred Buche, after a meeting with the executives of the group, later addressed the workers and promised to get the problem solved, attributing it to systemic failures with the hospital's human resource. We have a committee who is looking at the human resource. A lot of these things that they are saying is about the human resource. And you can see that the working scheme and other things which were not in place, conditions of service, all those things, training and program and all those things have affected these, the staff in a very negative way. I would say that by in a month's time you see substantial change. The workers agreed to hold on with the action, but only after a month. All the exe chief executives that comes promise they will do this and they, they failed. If it happened that he also fails his promise, at least after one month, after one month, the time has, that he has given us, if he failed, then we'll... <laughs> Road safety agencies on Friday took their campaigns to the bus terminals as part of efforts to reduce road accidents during the Easter festivities. The Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, Motor Traffic and Transport Department and the National Road Safety Commission jointly carried out and announced visits and conducted road safety checks on vehicles within the Accra Tema metropolis. 
The exercise was to create awareness on road safety precautions before, during and after the Easter festivities. The officials who visited Ashaiman, Kaneshi, Kimbu and New Plant Station in Accra detected that many of the vehicles had worn out tires, incomplete wheel nuts and crack windscreens among others. A number of vehicles were also picked randomly and taken to some tests. Inspection of driving license, roadworthy certificates and general vehicle assessments were carried out as well as breath tests for alcohol levels. Several vehicles were also found with defective in indicator lights and headlamps, which officials say posed a hazard to pedestrians and other road users. Eight drivers in all were arrested for several road safety offenses, including two whose passengers were disembarked after abnormal alcohol levels were detected in their breaths. The agencies involved came to the conclusion that a lot of work still needs to be done. We believe that once a while we got to go to the stations, remind drivers of their responsible duties as far as carrying passengers from one end to another end is concerned. Definitely we are going to intensify our operations and by so doing all these lapses will be cleared. Thank you. The fact is that we need to accept the fact that as individuals we have a major role to play. The institutions are up and doing, doing what is expected of them. But as, a, as, as an individual, if you really don't accept the fact that you have a major role to play, then definitely it would be a big tax. Because when you move... Director of Education, Training and Research at the Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service, DSP Alexander Kwekuobin, emphasized the need for the campaigns to be replicated countrywide, as they have been successful in reducing road accidents. A lot of sensitization with regard to uh, passenger sensitization were done, and a lot of flyers on specific behaviors were shared. We think that with the help of the media, with little that we've done, if Ghana should hear, it will send a signal that we have basic safety rules of engagement and that if all of us comply, it will ensure peace on our roads. DSP Urban said the target was to reduce road accidents by 15% by 2015 and observed that road safety prevention and management was a shared responsibility between the agencies, passengers, drivers and transport operators. Matilda Pamaga for Joy News, Accra. We have more stories coming up after the break. Stay tuned. Persons suffering from gallstones will no longer have to undergo open surgery at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital to have them removed. This follows the acquisition of a $96,000 equipment to remove such stones. Hospital authorities say the new equipment will help clear the backlog of patients waiting their turn for surgeries as well as improve service delivery to patients. Over 500 patients are said to report to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital yearly with cases of gall or kidney stones, but only 350 of them end up being operated on. Sufferers of the condition, who are mostly men, have severe pains when urinating. The new procedure, which was previously unavailable in Ghana, forced many with the condition to travel abroad to seek treatment. Those who were unable to afford the cost of surgery, which currently ranges between 1,200 and 1,500 Ghana cities, are said to resort to alternative treatment and report to the hospital late. There are a lot of people on alternative medicine talking about drugs that can shrink your prostate. There's too much talk of prostate nowadays. Prostate, prostate, prostate. Be very careful about some of these medications. Because if you want them, you should be monitored to make sure that you are not strained to pass urine. But they don't do that. So they will take taking the drugs, so one day they wake up in the morning and their face is puffy, their kidneys are packed up, and then they refer them to us. Sometimes by the time they come, it's too late. Officials say the new method, which would not be through incision, would see the insertion of stents into the body of patients to break down the stones and ensure early recovery. In which we pass instruments through the urethra, that's the prostate, and remove the prostate piecemeal. Well, there's, there's no cutting business. So that's the prostate, and you remove it piecemeal. piecemeal. This patient will now be on the wall for about two or three days, or maximum four days. 
We've been doing this for some time now, but the water that we use during the procedure can be dangerous. So there's a limit to how much procedure you can remove. Usually by one hour we should be finishing this operation. Now there's been a new advancement. You can actually use normal saline. And with that you can cut large uh, volumes of prostate. And the, ma the machine is a son and tool of kind of donated who allow us to do that. Chief Executive Reverend Albert Buche, who took delivery of the equipment, indicated it would go a long way to develop local expertise in urology. If we should position the hospitals, especially Kolebu, at the international markets of service delivery, where we can, I mean, pr uh, promote medical tours, we will not be looking at oil all the time. We'll be looking at health service delivery as one of the major sums of revenue, major source of revenue, because the doctors and the professionals in, in, in Kolebu are comparable to any other doctor or health care uh, professionals elsewhere. Dr. Mensa also advised the public to drink lots of water to continuously cleanse the body as the disease is caused by inadequate hydration. Several people in Zuha, Yama and Mishu in the, in the West Mampusi district of the northern region have been rendered homeless following a heavy downpour which lasted for hours in the area. Properties of residents such as clothing, foodstuffs and electrical gadgets of residents were lost in the storm. The roofs of about 46 houses and 12 classroom blocks in two schools, Zuha Junior High School and Mishu Junior High School, were also ripped off completely. Not more officials in the district are yet to visit the affected victims. Member of Parliament for the area, Dr. Sagri Bangani, has told Joy News the affected victims are currently seeking shelter with family and friends and appeal to government to release resources to cater for them. Disaster, you know, has you know been one of the uh, annual rituals that befall us. You know, recently, I think one occurred in the eastern part of this constituency, that is in Tengue. Um, the Gedure, well, Gedure and Tengue, they are very close, yes. So, in fact, looking at the situation, it is very, very pathetic, because uh, if you look at the schools, you know, the pupils' learning is going to be impaired. We are just lucky Easter is around the corner. So, you know, but we have to work hard so that by the time that the third term begins, then we should be able to make these classrooms habitable for learning. The Member of Parliament for Commander Dina Iguafu Abrem, KEA constituency of the Central Region, Dr. Stephen Nana Atuatha, has called for the construction of a community health centre, an extension of the Commander Health Centre at Abrem, ACM, and Commander, respectively. The projects expected to cost 100,000 Ghana cities follow an appeal made by the KEEA Health Directorate for the provision of such projects to enhance health care delivery in the municipality. Abrem Esiam is a small community in the KEEA municipality with no health center, which meant that people had to travel about four kilometers to nearby communities or continue to Cape Coast to access health care. As a result, many sick, including pregnant women, are said to lose their lives before reaching a health facility. The project, therefore, is a lifesaver. Dr. Atu Arthur, also a former Central Regional Minister, indicated the project is a step in the right direction and forms part of the developmental agenda of the municipality. He hoped it will be completed within the nine-month period. It's between the capital of the Paramount, Barassi, and the Futu. Barassi has a chips compound, the Futu has a chips compound. But the distance is about four kilometers apart. For that matter, it becomes very difficult for you know, patients to visit these places. So we think that it is important for us to have uh, a chip compound here, at least for basic care, so that if there's anything that they could not move on to Kripos or any other place, that actually motivated us to uh, actually cast out for this project. The chief of the area, Nana Redu, 
pledged his support for the project and asked chiefs to liaise with the political authority for proper development. We need any type of training. We need how to control people, how to raise with them, and also anything be above one man in the world. We need, you see, sometimes, you know, seek bribery. No, what you see, you know, could instead of doing the right thing. And I mean, I never do this. My yard, my child, I may see any of my cry. I know how to control my people. I know how to raise with them, talk with them, be free with them. You see, with that, you know, only me, we can have one man, my cry, 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 one man, my for his part, the municipal health director, Kofi Menz, pledged to provide the necessary assistance to support the facility in the area of drugs and health personnel to help bring health care delivery to the doorstep of the people. The physician assistant at the Commenda Health Center touched on the lack of accommodation for health personnel in the area and hoped the government would come to their aid. Myself, I don't have a residency. I am written, and which poses a, a difficulty for us. So, if we are able to get accommodation for staff, it will enhance our, our work here a lot. As you can see, the space here for patients is very small, and most of the times, when the sun sets, it's, it hits on them, and when it's raining, it also affects them. So, they are squeezed in a small place, which creates a lot of congestion. Georgina Pierce report from Cape Coast. The Minister of Water Resources, Works and Housing, Alhaji Collins Dauda, says government will continue to fulfill its obligation to the citizenry by providing the necessary amenities for communities across the country. He reiterated the pledge after inspecting construction works on the Dadiya Swaba Mehame Road and a 66-year-old bridge over the River Tano, which has been renovated. Nesto Kafui Ajuma has more in this report. The bridge over the Tano River on the Mohammed Adiyasuba Road in the Sutifi South District of the Bonafu region was constructed in 1948. Since then, no rehabilitation works have been carried out on the bridge. The road close to the bridge becomes inaccessible whenever the Tano River overflows its banks. This residency has led to several pregnant women losing their lives, especially during the raining season. Though several appeals have been made to successive government to fix the problem, nothing has been done about it until now. The construction works currently underway is in fulfillment of a promise made by Al Haji Collins Dauda, who also doubles as a native and member of parliament for the area to lobby to get the road and bridge constructed. Yafrima, a farmer from Dadia Suba, crosses the bridge daily to a farm. She tells Joy News. Mihami and surrounding towns on the other side of the Tano River become inaccessible to them whenever it rains. The bridge is being constructed at the cost of 325,000 Ghana cities by the bridge maintenance unit of the Ghana Highway Authority as part of the $47.2 million Mihami Junction Dadiasuba Road project. Alhaji Collins Dauda spoke about the role the bridge plays in the daily lives of the people. To a very huge problem of the community, particularly people who live in Dadia Swaba. If somebody steals something from your house in Dadia Swaba and manages to cross to this side, that's the end of the case. You can chase him because no car can drive through. So the excitement of the people is confirming that they are so happy because at long last there is a solution to the problem that has confronted them since 1948. Chief of Mihami, Nana Owusu Konto, commended the government and Al Haji Collins for fulfilling the promise to construct the 31.5 meters carriageway bridge. The bridge would be able to carry loads of up to 60 tons when completed in December this year. Nesta Kafka Jumas reports for Joy News.
British parliamentarian Lord for Whiting over Chairman Wembley has charged African leaders to set their own developmental agenda while committing to the Maputo Declaration on Agriculture. The declaration mandates African governments to allocate 10% of GDP to agriculture development, while he said only a fifth of African states were complying. Joining you is caught up with Lord for Whiting of Chairman Wembley at the House of Lords lunching in London, UK, where he indicated agriculture was Africa's future. He stressed the continent was more than capable of feeding itself and growing its economy. Looking at how we promote research and development in Africa, in agriculture, how we reward science, technology and innovation in terms of our budgetary uh, allocations and listening to the farmer, the small and the medium farmer in particular, because it's about linking them to world markets. It's about giving them the support they need in order to turn Africa into what it can become the breadbasket of the world, not uh, nations and a continent uh, that are spending hard-earned foreign currency on importing food. There's no need for Africa to import food. Lord Boateng of Achimeng Wembley, uh, member of British House of Lords, the British politician with Ghanaian heritage also noted African governments cannot continue to expect aid from developed countries. We cannot as a continent continue to rely on others outside the continent. There's lots of money in Africa. Uh, I was in Jigawa State in northern Nigeria. Nigeria now the biggest economy in Africa. Uh, we in sub-Saharan uh, West Africa should be celebrating that fact. One of the exciting things I found in Jigawa was that there was a lot of Nigerian money now going, Nigerian money now going into Nigerian agriculture into not just production but also food uh, processing with Aliko Dangote and others leading the way. So it's about getting the balance right and I have no doubt uh, that we can do that. Alright, we're crossing over to Tamalena in the northern region. We were hoping to have uh, our studio B over there with Gifty and Apia, my co-uncle for the bulletin. It turns out that uh, we don't have that. But fortunately, we do have her on telephone. Good evening to you, Gifty. Good evening, Eva. All right, so how come uh, we're unable to, to get you live and uh, from our Studio B in, in Tamale? Well, Eva, I am, I am so frustrated as I speak with you right now. Um, all the other team members are extremely frustrated. Just when we have set up and we were ready to go, there was a crowd of policemen on the field pushing us, virtually pushing us out, uh, pushing us out of the, of the, of the stadium, like, I don't, I don't know the exact word I want to use to describe it anyway, but it's been really frustrating. We weren't able to do so because um, we had to leave, I don't know, for whatever reason, they had to suck us from the stadium. All right, Gifty, it's okay, fortunately we have uh, technology still to work with, we have, uh, we're able to get you on telephone, so can you tell us what has been happening uh, throughout the day at the Congress? It's less than, uh, what, 12 hours to the Congress. And uh, I'm told uh, Kufuado and uh, the leadership of the party, they've been going around uh, the city engaging in the, having some uh, engagements. Can you tell us about that? Yes, um, well, my man Kufuado, you know, um, arrived yesterday. Today he went to um, the Tamale Central Mosque where he went to worship with them told them why they were there he thought the reason why he said they were there was that they they want some prayers for good fortunes in the congress during the congress and also in the 2016 elections and he also led the other executive of the party and other sympathizers to the residence and base side of um Alaji Ali Mahama, former vice president and that's about what uh, he did today we also know about what happened in Ababo and the police have been following up. Exactly. Uh, you know, do we have any news as to how many more people probably, I mean, did anybody die out? Or do you have any casualties? Yes, the casualty, I mean, the things that we reported earlier on, about nine people were injured, four of them were, critical, were, critical, uh, were in, uh, in a very critical condition. The only female among them was uh, going to the theater at that 9 a.m. 
um, this morning when the crew went to the hospital. Okay. Um, Samir Uku has been seeking to join us, and what he told us was that the, there's a, if the police does not investigate and bring the people to group, what could happen is that there could be reprisal attacks. And that, that happens to be uh, one of the... Uh, it seems to be a line running through their conversation, uh, those who spoke to join you. The police, the police PR organizer, Peter Minwa, has been saying that um, they are go investigations are already underway and that security has been intensified in the area, in Ababo. Okay. Now, one final thing uh, before I let you go. There's also been this, uh, we're getting, you know, lots of commentaries, uh, people endorsing and, uh, you know, vouching or speaking or campaigning against some of the, some of the executives or some of the aspirants. Uh, one, uh, what exactly is uh, Professor Frimpong Boateng saying about uh, the chairman and the general secretary incumbents? Well, Dr. Ramipo Martin spoke to um, George Okovna, and he was quite categorical. What he told George Okovna was that he thinks that Jacob H. Villante should be off, off the executive body of the NPP because he, he believes that there has to be a whole new crop of leadership for the, uh, for the uh, NPP. He also spoke to Alan Chemante. Okay. Alan Jamante is very happy, and actually he's, he's calling for unity in the party. All right. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Gifty, Andrew Apia, and the rest of the crew. Uh, I do empathize with you, the fact that we were unable to get you as we had arranged, and the fact that you have to put up that wonderful setup like we had for the bulletin yesterday, and it turned out that we couldn't have used it because uh, you were rushed out of the stadium. But do stay tuned to join news and indeed across the multimedia platform because we're bringing you comprehensive coverage of the MPP National Delegates Congress which takes place tomorrow at the uh, Tamale Sports Stadium at Tam in Tamale in the northern region. We're comprehensive on radio, TV and online. Coming up next, we bring you business news. So as we always say, we bring you updates in business. My name is Abigail Adumakoenchi, and in a very first story, we would be doing, um, uh, you know, U.S. banking giant J.P. Morgan Chase has reported a sharp fall in profits at the start of 2014, which is blamed on declines in its mortgage business. The bank said net income in the three months to the end of March was $5.3 billion, a fall of 19% compared with the year earlier, Profits from its mortgage business stood at $114 million, down $559 million from last year. These figures mark the second successive quarterly fall in profits at the bank. Now we'll be bringing you more um, stories on the ban on poultry imports or the supposed ban on poultry imports. But w before that, we will be bringing you um, news on importers and exporters, what they have against the new forest measures that the Bank of Ghana introduced. And they are claiming that uh, they are not to be blamed for the consistent decline in the value of the Ghana CD against the international currencies. Uh, the association says the problem should rather be placed at the doorsteps of free zone companies uh, it says repatriate large volumes of hard cash. The association in an interview with Joy Business also described the recent press measures introduced by the Bank of Ghana as rather harsh. Though the heavily import-dependent nature of the Ghanaian economy has been widely blamed for the CD's woes, the importers and exporters disagree. The free zone companies that are owned by non ghanaians who are supposed to repatriate 90% of their profit and leave only 10% retention to train their staff. Are they doing it? Are they not transferring 90% of whatever profit they make? Is it not in dollar? 
during the I don't know changing our Ghanaian city into dollar before they fly it out. The mining company that are, that that does not own by the Ghanaians in this country that at the end of the day they repatriate all their profit. I don't know part of the the depreciation of the city. The oil company that like this uh, the country now is uh, exploiting oil. Now we are an oil company, an oil country now. Those who owe the blocks in this country, I don't know foreign it, I don't know repatriating everything after the export. Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana, Samson Asaki, insisted the Bank of Ghana's new forex measures were rather running down businesses. If you are a businessman here, you are my supplier, and I'm to transfer money, and I said, money is in your account, you get your account, and the money is not there. Utmost good faith, trust is not there. Right. God deceive you. Right. And I'm saying that importers you to ship containers to the country. Before they get to the country and even pay the free to their agency, like Mechline is bringing my cargo from China. I get to, China, I get to Ghana, I pay free to Mechline, they will give it to their principal. Now we can no longer do that because I cannot pay. But the person has rendered themselves to you on Forex. I have to pay Forex. They say I should not owe Forex currency account again. That's the difficulties importers of this country are now facing. And so corporate organizations have been asked to embrace the new social media platforms in the promotion of their brands or risk losing out in the current trendy business environment. Chief Executive of Mobile Telecoms firm MTN Ghana, Seram Tokubong, is also of the opinion businesses have to be sensitive to consumer power when they demand quality services. He was speaking at the Chartered Institute of Marketing lecture that an evening with the CEO in Accra. The second in a series was on the theme Consumer Power in the Digital Age Attracted Key Players of Industry as well as Marketing Professionals. Sarah Mitalkobam noted that Consumer Power provides the foundation and outlet for brand disloyalty, especially if the consumer is not treated well. The key is about the power between the consumer and yourselves. Clearly understanding that you are no longer the dominant force you have to find them. It is about service delivery. The key thing there that that last P, which is called product, is now called experience. So deliver what you promise. Innovation. You have to move two or three steps ahead of the customers. He added, the digital world is rapidly evolving as such. Corporate organizations must also learn to adapt to the changing environment and take advantage of social media platforms. I think the key thing that um, our markets will enjoy, if you look at how the internet is growing on our continent, it's actually being driven by mobile. And of course the increase of mobile penetration therefore means more people having better access and quicker access to data. So the key thing that we're driving certainly as MTN is to ensure that we drive the digital growth by ensuring that more and more of our customers have access to data. I think it is a proven fact that an increase in broadband penetration actually increases or has an impact on GDP as a whole. So embracing the digital world is critical for the development of our continent. Vice President of CIMG Kojomati stressed the body will use the lecture to highlight issues that will benefit the Ghanaian consumer. He expressed hope that people will use the digital and social media platforms to ensure the positive development of the country. Matilda Pamaga for Joy News Accra. So away from telecommunication to what I informed you about earlier, the Ghana National Association of Poultry Farmers says it does not want a ban on poultry imports, but wants importers to cooperate with local farmers for broilers to create a market for both local and imported poultry. The farmers maintain they are not well resourced to produce enough poultry con uh, for consumers if there is a ban now. They are however saying that the broiler revitalization project currently underway uh, will be able to feed about 95% of consumers in the next five years when they undertake that. Ghana's poultry sector continues to face challenges following the free importation of poultry products onto the market. The stiff competition from these cheap imports poultry farmers face have brought to the fore the need to ban them. But poultry farmers say that will not be prudent under the current circumstance. I don't remember ever going into any meeting when we have asked government to ban. You see, we have to be very realistic about this. Because if government is to ban, then it means that we are very much in a position to immediately, you know, let's say after about just 10 weeks, fill the market. But the situation in which we are now, we can't. Uh, many of the farms are not adequately capitalized to be able to rally up production to within four, 
to 10 weeks, put uh, broiler chicken on the market. And that could create um, problems. It could create problems because Ghanaians now eat a lot of chicken. You know, if you look at the fact that every year for the past three, four years, our total consumption in the country is upwards of um, 150, 180. Uh, thousand metric tons. In fact, last year the official figure says that it's about 200,000 metric tons. The Ministry of Food and Agriculture is, however, set to enforce the poultry and livestock import policy, which will allow importers to bring into the country only 100 tons each of livestock and poultry products every three months. Poultry farmers, while appreciative of the move, insist on enforcement by government and importers' cooperation. What we have been advocating for is that government must create an equal playing field for the local poultry industry to be able to effectively compete with the imports. So now, if government is scaling down, we can fail because we have gone quite far with government when the importers still remain uncooperative. Then the government can place the ban. Yeah, because we expect that they will cooperate with us and buy the chickens from their processes and sell. We also hope to bridge the poultry production gap in the next five years through the broiler revitalization project. After June, what we are looking at is that from, let's say, July up to the following year, July, we should be able to put on the market not less than five million um, broiler chickens then call it the year two or the second year we will ramp it up to not less than 10 million beds by the fifth year we should be hitting at least 50 million beds you know so gradually over a period of seven eight years we we sure that we'll be able to recapture um, minimum 80 percent of the chicken that is consumed in the country. The project will also cut down government's expenditure on poultry imports, which stood at $270 million last year. Abigail Atmakwenchi for Joy News. And that will be all for business. My name is Abigail Atmakwenchi. George Adu Jr. comes up next with sports. We start sports tonight and we talk about tennis. McDonald's Shipping Company, in collaboration with Rush Energy Drinks and the Ghana Tennis Federation, will stage the mating edition of the Seniors and Juniors Open, which is intended to revive the sport. The tournament, which is slated for April 22 to 26 at the Accra Stadium Tennis Court, will see winners of both divisions bag 1,000 Ghana CDs and a trophy each. Technical Director of the Tennis Association, David Chetcher, says the tournament will be of great help in churning more top. So we are encouraged by what he said, especially the idea that he's going to send, you know, the four top players to Spain. That is the right way we have to go because if we leave the uh, development of the tennis players on the association, I bet we cannot do enough. All that we can do is to give them the basics. But if it comes to specializing, you know, uh, making the you know, players, top players. We need some individuals, you know, to take charge of the training, of the payment of maybe professional coaches, you know, providing shoes, money for transport. Then we know, you know, we're going for it. We are so grateful to Magdan, you know, for uh, bringing this idea of taking our boys to Spain, where we have currently the world number one. That's his, you know, place. So I'm sure it will help Ghana tennis. Right, so four teams in the UEFA Champions League have their work cut out for them. And Chelsea have been drawn against Atletico Madrid in the semi-finals, while Real Madrid face holders by Munich. That's one of the equally exciting draws as well in the Europa League. Let's quickly have a look at the fixtures for that semi-final. And there you have it on your screen. It's Sevilla up against Valencia. Valencia performing the miracle in getting into this particular position. And of course, you have Benfica up against Juventus, who are four-time winners. So we're hoping to win it for the fourth time. And there's Ghanaian blood running through Juventus. Quite just somewhere. And so we're looking ahead to that particular game and hoping that they definitely get themselves in the right place in the final. That will be all for sports tonight. And for the week, I'm George Adi Jr. Israel will join us with some more. Have a great weekend.
A hip life artist, Guru, has denied reports that came out a few months ago that he deserves all, he deserves five awards at this year's Ghana Music Awards. In an exclusive interview with Joy News, however, he's quick to add that it wouldn't be a bad idea at all if he is to win all eight nominations at the VGMAs. <laughs> <laughs> Guru, whose real name is Nanayao Eje Yeboa, appeared to have enjoyed a good year in 2013 with the release of his popular song, Boy Sabre. From from Tihoda, Ajinya Mepe, Ntiyaka, I said, Al-Qaeda, Boy Sabre, Al-Qaeda, why you the one flex, Al-Qaeda, Boy Sabre, Al-Qaeda. Just weeks before the nomination list for the Music Awards were released, some musicians started counting how many awards they anticipated to take home at the end of the day. Guru was reported to be one such artist who was hoping to bag five awards he thought he deserved. He has disputed putting a figure to the awards, but explains why he must receive an award at this year's VGMAs. One thing is I never made mention of a five or never came out with a, a particular figure or something else here. Yeah. It was just some rumor and we, we had eight nominations and then we, we want to pick up because we, we did a great job and hard work. We, we should get what we deserve after boys are bred and everything coming out with the revolution and boys are bred trending all over to parliament. It was named after the uh, budget and all that, after massive enjoyment of the new dance we came out, we endorsed the al -Qaeda dance. I think we did a massive job. We were able to inspire the people, motivate them. That's what the society needs. The boy Sabre hitmaker, however, says his concentration is on dropping more hit songs this year for his fans. For well, the bulletin, before I go there, a quick run through our top stories. The essence of the Judgment Debt Commission has been debated at the Joy FM debate series. Workers at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital paid from the hospital's internally generated funds are threatening a strike over their salary concerns and conditions of service. President Mahama has declared days of champagne popping ambassadors over. He swears in two new envoys to the Netherlands and the United Kingdom. Meanwhile, it's less than 12 hours to the MPP's National Delegates Congress and Joy News and indeed all the units in the multimedia group will be bringing you comprehensive coverage. So it's going to be on radio, TV and online all day tomorrow. Just make it. My name is Israel Lai. Have a good evening.